Hi there, and welcome back. You're listening to The Everglade Chronicles, a reading. I'm Garrett Shave, the author. Well, folks, we finally made it. Today, I'll be reading the final chapter, Chapter 12, The Sun Sets. Jessica has come a long way from the timid, obedient girl we once knew her as. What is the fate of her and Sassy Cassie? Will they truly prevail, or has Queen Venus won the day? For the last time, let's get started. Grab your katana and your favorite kimono. Starting in 2024, the podcast begins the second novel, The Tale of the Cloverleaf Lord. Who is the Clover Lord? Find out January 2024. The orange and yellow of the sun's rays set the stage for the final moment of the duel. We were all hushed, silently panicked and distraught. She's not going to make it, Ben was mumbling beside me. Out of sheer worry, I gripped his hand. He gave me a look of surprise at first, but gripped it even tighter. She'll pull through, Matthew was saying. She must, Kale said. She is our sassy Cassie, Catherine added, her voice tight with anguish. I looked across at Cora, who looked equally pale and worried. She held her hands behind her back, and by doing this I could tell she was handcuffed. Cassidy will die a martyr, I know it, Mark said worriedly. He was rubbing his hands quickly together, more out of concern than habit. She is a tough girl, my sister coughed. Madison and a nursemaid named Prue had her on a blanket on the ground. While her wound was purely fictitious, they were working hard at fixing the stab. Suddenly, Cassidy pushed back and Caitlin shifted her weight. She went back a little, surprised at the outbreak. Cassidy attacked her. She began thrusting and slashing and dancing about. I had never seen her move so fast before, even with a sword in one hand. Now it was the queen's turn to feel anguish, and to feel the possible defeat. Feeling a little spirited, are you? Venus was laughing. This shall not last as long as you think. We shall see, Sassy Cassie yelled. At last, both girls became too exhausted to continue. The duel might have lasted a tad longer than an hour, but all of us had stayed and watched. Venus was breathing heavily, but refused to back down. In one quick and jubilant move, Cassidy stabbed out the very second the queen lowered her rapier. A look of intense pain covered her face as the plastic sword poked into her chest. Falling backwards, she let the rapier slide from her hands. Goodness, no, Ryan said loudly from the earth. How, how could I have, have slipped like this? Caitlin groaned as she hit the ground. Her butler and the herald ran over as fast as they could, followed by a sobbing Lady Chloe. The queen, her butler spoke sadly. The queen is dying. Can't someone do something? Cora was freed from her cuffs, and in a brazen move, grabbed Cassidy's idle sword and stabbed the butler in the back. Falling aside, she jabbed the sword at Chloe, who collapsed. Now this is all over, Cora hollered like a madwoman. They're all dead. You... You finally have your victory, the queen moaned. I stood near Cassidy, who stared blankly at the dying majesty. Lady Chloe let out a dying sigh, followed by a moan of death from the butler. The herald, who was quick to escape, went home. I took off my mask so that Venus might glimpse the meadow's hero. Ha! Venus laughed, death slowly finding her. Jessica Walker, of all the people. She sighed heavily, closing her eyes. Uneasy lies the head who wears the crown. But the last bit of her strength, she took the crown off her head. She died with it clutched in her hand. Sure enough, Caitlin would be granted a restart like all the children of the meadow. Whether they wanted to join our new world, I was not sure at that moment. I only stared at that plastic crown, reflecting on all we had accomplished. All hail Queen Cassidy, Mark yelled. He began the chant and soon everyone was saying it. I smiled, but Cassidy did not smile at all. Instead, she turned to us and asked for quiet. Today is truly a historic day, but I am not your new queen, she began. There were puzzled looks, mine included, but her speech continued. While I have fought with you and led you without fail and finished off the last of Queen Venus, I simply cannot become your new ruler. In light of watching this majesty fade out and die, I have decided that I cannot carry the burden of such a crown. The duty would only kill me and make me fade into the darkness. As an interim majesty, I only wish to nominate one person to whom the crown should go. Isis. 
I froze. Everyone held. Jessica Walker is the Meadows hero. She rose up and gave me the strength to do what I did today. She is responsible for creating a hero we wouldn't have dreamed of to save us. She is Isis. She is the new queen. The sea of children was quiet at first, but then they began to clap and cheer. A Queen Isis chant arose, and soon everyone was chiming in. I felt myself cry, tears swelling in my eyes and running down my cheeks. Never in my entire life had I ever expected to find the courage inside me, the courage to stand up for what I believed in and be rewarded with the greatest treasure in all the land. I wiped away the tears as Cassidy placed the plastic crown on my head. The sun was setting on an old world and would arise again tomorrow on a new realm. Through hard work and determination, we had destroyed the oppression. We had obliterated the evil. The darkest parts of our meadow would become gold and filled with light again. Queen Isis would rule with a golden touch and truly live up to her name. I adjusted my watermelon-colored glasses and stared at the army. Cora was crying, too. Even Cassidy had shed a few tears. My eyes landed on Ben. Little Ben. My tough and lovable Ben. He smiled momentously at me and blinked away the tears welling in his eyes. Tomorrow is the first day of our new kingdom, I told them, finding my voice to be a little dry and light. Tomorrow things will be right again, like they were before. For those who can remember, anyway. I took a moment and continued to smile at Ben. I would just like to thank all of you. I owe my life to you all. Your courage, your determination, your strength. A cheer went up again and I cleared my throat. I wish to make my first formal edict. By Her Majesty's command, I hereby declare you, Benjamin Morrison, King Consort of this realm. There was a bit of a quiet enthusiasm before there was cheer. As Ben blushed uncontrollably, I kissed him on the lips. It felt better than the first time, and my heart was feeling lifted. Was this love? Could this possibly be love? I knew Ben would help me rule this tattered realm and help me fix it up. So would Cassidy, so would Cora and Mark. Matthew and Tyler, even my little sister would help. We would all work together to create a wondrous meadow. I could see it now. They cheered and clapped as we kissed, and I had never felt so jubilant in my entire life. This was truly the best of all days. I was now the neighborhood queen. That concludes Chapter 12, our readings for this week. Join me next time for the epilogue and the author's note. I want to personally thank all of you listeners and readers who have taken the time to support me. Beginning in January 2024, the podcast moves to The Tale of the Cloverleaf Lord, the second book in the Chronicles of Everglade. See you all next time. And now I leave you with the music of Shimmers by Captures. Don't forget to dance! Everything Chronicles or at Everything Chronicles on Instagram.